as I look at everything, we are getting close. It looks to me like we are rapidly approaching that place of game over. And listen, we see the world quickly building the infrastructure of Antichrist. There are all kinds of sociological and geopolitical signs that the tribulation is rapidly approaching. And uh, listen, we're going to be talking about these things in just a second. But uh, just a real quick update for you. A week from this coming Sunday, I have a special program that we're going to have Sunday night. I have Sunday mornings coming. Hope that you can join us for church on Sunday mornings if you don't already have a church, but you could join us right here at Hope for Our Times Church. But then a week from this Sunday night, I have a special program coming as I had an opportunity to interview someone. Uh, listen, it's going to uh, blow your socks right off. And then also coming up for both Palm Sunday and Resurrection Sunday, also known to some people the Easter, uh, I'm going to be having messages from Jerusalem for Palm Sunday. Our hope, if we can pull it off, is to film right on the Palm Sunday road. And then we'll see what happens on Resurrection Sunday. We're hoping to be able to film Resurrection Sunday right there at the Garden Tomb in Jerusalem. But both of those will be coming from Jerusalem. So mark your calendars for those two Sunday mornings too. And uh, just one more thing, if you would, really appreciate it if you would uh, subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so already. really helps us. It helps with the algorithms, be able to get the word out there more. And also, if you would share this program, too, uh, with your friends or whoever is in your contacts, really helps us to get everything out there. All right. Well, let's get, let's get rolling. So consider these things. Did you know that the elites, they dumped $11 billion in stocks? That's rather interesting. Why do you think they did that? Well, let's not stop there. Well, check this out. Uh, there's the fires in Texas and the destruction of cattle. What is going on with that? Wh why did those fires start? Was it directed energy weapons? Very interesting. But listen, it doesn't stop there. So many other things are actually continuing to take place. It is absolutely unbelievable. Consider this. Trudeau, the prime minister of Canada, permitted, get this, Chinese nationals to work at National Virus Lab, get this, covered up espionage scandal to get himself re-elected. I mean, you look at this and you go, what in the world's going on? Well, here's something else for you. This is out of The Defender, a war for our minds. Journalists warn a vast propaganda censorship network unlike any before in human history. I don't think that's really a shock to Many of us, but listen, there continues, this is out of Breitbart, blood money. I think it's Peter Schweitzer who wrote this book. Meet the secretive China-linked U.S. left-wing groups driving chaos in our streets. So you wonder why there's chaos in our streets? You start looking and you realize, well, wait a minute, this is all paid for. Well, yeah, it's all paid for. It's all intentional. And then you look at this. What's going on with Israel? Judith Butler calls October 7 Hamas terror attack arm resistance. Armed resistance? You've got to be kidding me. Armed resistance? Unbelievable. But we don't stop there. And then you look at this. Biden continues slapping sanctions on Israeli citizens and not just settlers. But wait, there's even more. As we look at this, Biden's rift with Netanyahu grows even wider. So you start looking at all of these things and it starts to raise a question, uh, how close are we? Is it game over for everything that's been going on in this world? Are we about ready to enter into the tribulation period? Has it al already begun or how close are we? Well, with that, let's ask this question. What is the tribulation? Have you looked over the scriptures that answer that question? Are the answers fresh in your mind? Let's work through this because there's so much to put together. So this is what I want to do. I want to give you firm scriptural foundation so that you can understand the tribulation and its purpose and to be able to tell others. Because we see everything that's going on. Listen, everybody has questions. What in the world is going on? So with that, understanding the tribulation and listen, what is coming, there are many prophetic references to what we usually call the tribulation. For instance, Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 7 says, Alas, 
for that day is great, so that none is like it. And it is the time of Jacob's trouble. So that provides one of the best descriptions of those seven years, the time of Jacob's trouble. So think of, uh, of what is going on right now. Jesus told us that lawlessness would abound. We see it in the streets, in the courts, where there is no justice. We see it in the big cities and the small cities. And as I just read uh, from the article, this chaos is funded by the Chinese. And not just the Chinese, you throw George Soros in there too. And then we have judges disrespecting the rights of victims and the constitution of the US being ignored. We see lawlessness abounding in politics. We see the love of many growing cold. Everyone is offended because of the name of Jesus. We see the escalation of wars and rumors of wars and nation against nation. We see earthquakes in various places and the rise of pestilence, man-made or otherwise. And we see deception increasing at an incredible rate with a great departure from the faith and the rise of fake Christianity. But the major sign of the time of Jacob's trouble is Israel and all the prophecies surrounding Israel. So, I mean, you start looking at all of the things, everything that I just read regarding, uh, regarding all the different articles, the news stories, and then combined with the things from Matthew chapter 24, and then you look at Israel, and then you look even in the midst of the October 7 war, you start looking at all of these things, there is the talk of a building of the third temple, and it looks like the sacrifice of a red heifer may be coming as soon as Passover as Passover is coming up here in April. I mean, folks, you start putting these things together and you're going, oy vey, you better be ready. And there's also the pressure for Israel to engage in a really bad peace plan. It's increasing against Israel every single day, especially from the US and their globalist counterparts in the EU. They want to put an end to Israel. So, back to this, the tribulation, it's also known, as I mentioned, the time of Jacob's trouble, but also known as Daniel's 70th week. The ninth chapter of Daniel tells us exactly how long it lasts. Its purpose, what happens at the midpoint uh, that will be so devastating and exactly how it will begin. In, in Daniel chapter nine, verse two, Daniel speaking, I, Daniel, understood by the books the number of the years specified by the word of the Lord through Jeremiah the prophet that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolations of Jerusalem. What had Daniel been reading? Well, Daniel had been reading the prophet Jeremiah, specifically as we look at it, Jeremiah chapter 25, God says that he will send Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon against Judah the, and the remnant of Israel. And the Lord said, the whole land shall be a desolation and an astonishment and these nations shall serve the king of Babylon 70 years. Then it will come to pass, when 70 years are completed, that I will punish the king of Babylon and that nation. All right, continuing from there. Uh, think of this. The verse does not mean that all of Israel will return to the land at the end of the 70 years. But it re refers, excuse me, instead to the end of the land's desolation and the punishment of Babylon. Why would the Lord cause the land of Israel to be desolate for exactly 70 years? Because the people of Israel owed the land 70 years of rest. Hence, in Leviticus chapter 25, verses 3 and 4, God tells Israel, six years you shall sow your field, and six years you shall prune your vineyard and gather its fruit. But in the seventh year, there shall be a Sabbath of solemn rest for the land, a Sabbath to the Lord. You shall neither sow your field nor prune your vineyard. So this introduces the concept of Sabbath years or weeks of years, seven year intervals, the last of which was to be a year of rest, just like a Sabbath week or Shabbat week. Second Chronicles chapter 36 recounts these same events after they have happened. It takes about, or excuse me, it talks about the horrible things the king of Babylon did to Israel. Uh, those things included pillaging and burning the temple and breaking down the city walls. 
It says that all of this was to fulfill the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah until the land had enjoyed her Sabbaths. As long as she lay desolate, she kept Sabbath to fulfill 70 years. All right. Now, as we think of that, start going, what on earth does all of this with Israel's past have to do with everything that we see going on right now? Okay, well, let's keep going because it all connects. Israel as a nation never followed the law of the Sabbath years. God told them to let the land rest, a concept now common in agriculture, every seventh year. But for 490 years, they had ignored the law. Notice the repeated concept here of Sabbaths of years. As Daniel read Jeremiah's prophecy, he knew that the 70 years were almost over. As such, he prayed. He humbled himself before God. Daniel chapter 9, verses 3 through 5 says, Then I set my face toward the Lord God to make requests by prayer and supplications with fasting, sackcloth, and ashes. And I prayed to the Lord my God and made confession and said, O Lord, great and awesome God who keeps his covenant and mercy with those who love him and with those who keep his commandments. We have sinned and committed iniquity. We have done wickedly and rebelled. He responded to this incredibly good news of Israel returning to the land by entering a time of fasting and by clothing himself with sackcloth and ashes as if he were in mourning. He realized that in their almost 70 years of captivity, they had not repented and turned back to God, and it broke his heart. Then came the prophecy of the 70 weeks. While Daniel was speaking, praying, and confessing, Daniel chapter 9, verse 20, the angel Gabriel appeared to Daniel, and in Daniel chapter 9, verse 24, Gabriel begins his message from God. 70 weeks are determined for your people and for your holy city. In Hebrew, the word here translated as weeks literally means sevens. Hence, the angel tells Daniel, 70 sevens are determined. The context shows that Daniel is thinking in terms of weeks of years and Sabbaths of years because the 70 years captivity corresponds to the Sabbath years that Israel missed. Moving on from there, and how does all this connect? Let me show you in just a second. History proves that these sevens are weeks of years. This understanding is the key that unlocks much of God's last day's agenda. With this understanding, the 70 weeks prophecy becomes one of the most astonishing in all of the Bible. 70 weeks are determined for your people and for your holy city. The 77s are determined as though they were already written as history. That's the way it appears in the Bible, as if it's already happened. A more literal translation of the Hebrew word uh, would be the word decreed or settled. 70 weeks are settled. They are decreed as in God has decreed it. It is settled. The God who created all things with the words of his mouth, spoke it, and that's that. Because God decreed it, God determined it, it is a done deal, it has already been settled, nothing can be done to change it. Again, what is it? The 70th week of Daniel, the time of Jacob's troubles. And what is this for? The Bible tells us in Daniel chapter nine, verse 24, for your people and for your holy city, if there were any question about who Gabriel meant when he said to Daniel, your people, we could just look back a few verses when Daniel said he was confessing my sin and the sin of my people, Israel. So who are his people? The people of Israel, the Jews. What is Daniel's holy city? Well, look at how he prayed. According to Daniel chapter 6, verse 10, it was a custom since early days to pray three times a day with the windows open toward Jerusalem. Jerusalem is the holy city. So in the whole Bible, the phrase holy city is always used in reference to Jerusalem, except for two places in Revelation when it refers to the new Jerusalem. There can be no doubt 
that for your people and for your holy city refers to the people of Israel and the city of Jerusalem. All right, continuing a little bit more. I want to connect everything with what's going on right now. This is important because it challenges the teaching of replacement theology, that God has replaced Israel with the church. And there's so many people that call themselves Christians that have tried to say that it doesn't apply to the people of Israel. They say it's talking about the church. To say that is to warp this verse to the point of destruction. It misses the whole point of the 70 weeks of years by ignoring the actual words that are used. Everything is going exactly as the Bible has told us it would. Not only are all the signs, the events of the last days converging, but especially when we look at Israel and then Jerusalem, the bullseye or epicenter as Joel Rosenberg calls it. What are the chances that all of these prophecies are coming about at the exact same time, just as the Bible said? Listen, it is literally impossible. It can't possibly happen by chance. What great hope this gives us. Bible prophecy itself is proof that the Bible is true, and you can trust what it says about Jesus coming again, that he came the first time that we would be forgiven of our sins. Uh, friends, put all of this together, all of the prophecies, the items I opened up with in the beginning of this video, this is the convergence of the things of the last days that the Bible talks about. And there are hundreds of signs that are given throughout the Old Testament and the New Testament and by Jesus himself. So again, as we see all of the prophetic events coming about all at the same time with the focus on Israel and Jerusalem and the coming tribulation, what are the chances of it happening just by chance? It's impossible. Everything is coming about. Listen, the game is almost over. We're on the verge, and I hope that you know the Lord. The Bible gives us Bible prophecy so that we can know that his word is true. And Bible prophecy proves it's true. Listen, there's no other name under heaven by which a person can be saved than that of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We're, we're all sinners. We all need to be forgiven, you and me both. There's none who are perfect. And when we look at it in the right context, when we realize what it means to sin, to sin means to miss the mark. The mark is perfection, it's to be as perfect as God is, as perfect as Jesus is. And you and I, we can't do that. But in order to not be judged for our sins and experience separation from God for all of eternity and, and what the Bible describes as hell, listen, it's a horrific thought. Jesus came that we wouldn't have to experience that. And anyone who trusted him for the forgiveness of their sins, he was judged so we wouldn't be judged for our sins. That's why we trust in Christ. And by trusting in Christ, he took our judgment upon himself so that our future is heaven. Our, we have forgiveness now and the hope of heaven and this gift of salvation is for anybody who would come to the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus himself said, I will not cast out anyone who comes to me. And Jesus also himself said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. There is no other way. There is no other truth. There aren't two truths. There is no other life. You can't even live your own life and expect to be saved. So Jesus came. I am the way, the truth, the life that anyone who trusted him for the forgiveness of their sins will be forgiven. Listen, as we look at the nation of Israel and we look at the tribulation period, that seven-year period that I just described, this Israel is the epicenter. It all points to why all of these other events that the Bible talks about are happening at the same time, because the tribulation is about ready to begin. God is working with the nation of Israel. He's turning his attention there. And soon, all of the attention of the world is going to be on Jerusalem. Everything's happening just like the Bible says it will. Listen, ask Christ to forgive you of your sins, and he will be faithful, and he will forgive you, and you can know that you are forgiven, and you have the gift of eternal life. Listen, God bless you, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Looking forward to seeing you on Thursday with You Can't Make This Up, and then also on Sunday. God bless.